As we move into the second half of the centre's life, we're introducing nine new signature projects. One of the things about introducing a whole lot of ADM technologies is that sometimes it's actually quite hard to predict how it's all going to operate together. The Gen AI SIM project is about generative, data-driven simulations of human behaviour and automated decision making. The point of studying advertising is that advertising is kind of the backbone of the automated digital economy. So if we want to answer really important questions about our media environment, the flows of information we're immersed in, then it all kind of goes back to the advertising model. So by doing a project like this, and by understanding what's really tuning and shaping our information and media environments more, we're able to kind of imagine what fairer, more just, more inclusive forms of automated digital media look like in the future. The project was conceived uh, in order to look beyond the so-called dominant paradigms when we look at AI, generative AI and other ADM technologies and the systems, uh, whether it's in the phase of development or in the phase of application. Authenticity is a key issue for dealing with the rise of generative AI and the use of generative AI in society and dealing with scams and identity management. So the project builds on uh, much of the work that we've done in the centre across the phase one research projects around trust in news media and trust in media environments. We wanted to ensure that Australia as a middle power plays an important role in our great digital transformations. We've established a whole bunch of really strong frameworks for understanding the impact of automation um, on society and we've developed a range of socio-technical approaches, uh, but we've also developed a really strong familiarity with one another's work methods, our expertise, our different approaches to these types of research questions. And we've done that through a range of different projects through the first phase of the centre. Search is one of the defining technologies of the internet ultimately. We're looking to shed more light on how search engines operate, uh, what results they produce, what the quality of those results is as well. I am from a law background, I'm a lawyer, and um, getting to work closely with computer scientists, data scientists, people from cultural and media studies, to, to really bring all perspectives to some really tricky questions around how our cultural flows are shaped in society, I think is, is really important and really exciting. The project Evaluating Cultural Curation and Ranking Systems will be partnering with the ABC to look at whether synthetic data can be useful in developing and evaluating systems for uh, news curation, which really uh, prioritises uh, public service media values within the way that that news is delivered. We're also excited to be building on the existing projects that the centre has been doing, such as mapping the digital gap and the Australian Digital Inclusion Index. Telstra, the industry partner, have decided to fund us to do a second phase of this research. While we're continuing to track progress, we're really wanting to expand that data collection out to see how it looks different in different contexts um, for small communities and homelands and some of those bigger communities and even regional towns. We have governments globally, Commonwealth level, state level, all of whom are grappling with really tricky questions around how how to update the law, reform the law, how regulators should act in this new space. And so the regulatory project aims to be a hub to bring all of the knowledge and research of ADMS to bear on all of those law reform and discussion processes. And ultimately with all the debate going on right now about the impact of the internet on how people inform themselves, we need to make a really significant contribution to informing that debate and enabling policymakers and others, uh, educators who focus on digital literacy as well, to um, develop the right approaches to regulating search engines, to providing appropriate information uh, to users as well about how to search effectively on, on these platforms. 
So going into phase two, we'll be able to have a much better picture of how that those digital gaps are changing over time. So we'll have that longitudinal data. We will also be able to see what other in interventions that are placed into these communities, how they play a role in improving digital inclusion over time. And then to feed all of that back to industry and government as what policy inputs can be put in to try and address this challenge going forward. We're now at the point where we can help the public and work with our industry partners on opening up opportunities for using AI and exploring the benefits in their context. At the heart of the project, we're developing an AI capabilities lab, uh, which is essentially a technical space for experimenting and co-developing and co-designing with our um, partner organisations and with members of the communities, the kind of resources and tools and literacies that they need to address and use AI technologies. So in the second phase of the Ad Observatory project, we're kind of shifting our focus. In the first part, what we did was look at the ads that are flowing through our Facebook feeds. But in the second phase, we're kind of like turning our orientation around and we're looking at the people who receive the ads. So we're focusing on particular groups of Australians and working with them to figure out what their experience of automated advertising is. And then the other really important shift we're making is we're going into their mobile feeds and getting them to donate the ads that are appearing on their smart, in their smartphones. Because that's where the majority of automated advertising finds us now. It finds us in the palm of our hand as we're scrolling away on our phone. And that flow of ads actually has been really dark and ephemeral and kind of not really open to any kind of public understanding. One of the strengths of ADMS is we can bring an expert, independent perspective to um, these tools and how we develop them so that we can ensure that we're doing it in an appropriate way. One of the questions that underpins this project is how do we decide what is valuable and therefore what is prioritised in what content people are shown in recommender and ranking systems. What we want to look at is whether it is possible and desirable to embed uh, cultural and civic values in the way that these recommender and ranking systems work. ADM technologies are often proposed as the solution to all sorts of different types of problems and the space of ecology and conservation and environment uh, are no exception. But if they are going to be the solution to the problems, we also have to understand how they contribute to problems and how people in their daily lives or organisations in the way they implement um, technological systems are making choices that push them down the right path of um, safety and responsibility in relation to ecology and that the choices are being made with a really full understanding of what the potential impacts of implementing a system are for the rich modern human and multi-species environments that we all live in and depend upon. Can Australia be the test bed for AI and ADM technological development application and regulation standards setting? As a middle power, what kind of role can we play? And, and of course, one of the really important aspects with all of it has been that we've been able to uh, build these collaborations, these interdisciplinary collaborations through ADMS, because ADMS as a centre of excellence, as a mechanism for bringing together multiple disciplines, multiple universities, multiple researchers around the world and, and, and industry partners and everyone else um, has, be, has provided such a rich environment for us all to work together, to get to know each other, to get to know our, our, our varying understandings of these, these environments and build a joint project from all of this. And that's, that's been a really enriching experience as well.